And now it's time for another edition of What Would Jello Do? And yes, I'm here again to complain about this disproportionate amount of coverage and fawning given to people running for president in 2012 when the election is still over one year away. Does it really matter right now about Michelle Bachman or Rick Perry or some dude who used to run a chain of pizza restaurants that tried to go national and failed? I've heard this referred to as the silly season, and this is one of the silliest ones of all. So why is so much attention being paid to this? Because then you don't have to tell people anything else that's going on, like the so-called free trade agreement treaties that are going to get voted on in Congress this week that Obama and crew claimed they opposed a couple years ago, but are now trying to sneak past people where you have those same sort of disastrous free trade agreements that aren't really free at all. They're corporate managed trade that helped gut our economy with what we did with Mexico and then CAFTO with Central America so no mining companies are going back into the jungles of El Salvador and killing people who won't let them take their land. Well now they want to do the same thing with of all countries Colombia, South Korea and Panama. Colombia, where labor leaders get murdered by paramilitary death squads connected to the government simply for trying to organize a union. Great free trade opportunity. Panama, one of the most notorious money laundering countries in the world with all kinds of slipshod little corrupt laws. There's a reason so many ships and oil tankers that break apart and sink are registered in Panama or Liberia. It's that corrupt. And then South Korea, there's a little backdoor provision in there that also basically makes it, believe it or not, a free trade agreement with North Korea because South Korea already has a little sweatshop program going where they can pay North Korean workers 65 cents an hour for what they'd pay somebody in South Korea a lot more money, ship the goods into South Korea, and then South Korea can ship them anywhere because after all, free trade is free. So now back to the silly season. There is a solution for this. Number one, a parliamentary system, and the best part about it, we can do this even without a parliamentary system, limit election campaign time to either 30 or, I'll be generous, 60 days before the election. That's it. It's easy in parliamentary systems because the governing coalition or party calls the election for 30 days away from when they call, say, it's, uh, the date is set 30 days after they've called the election. And so all that dumb stuff we get in the silly season all gets crammed into a short amount of time, so it's election fever, more people vote, so we could do 30 days before the primary, another 30 days before the election, done. And you don't have to listen to these people or even be reminded of their existence until that point. And there might even be a better idea is to have everybody follow the example of one of my great revolutionary heroes that nobody else seems to appreciate, Pope John Paul I. Not John Paul II, John Paul I, the one who dropped dead after 30 days in office. When dead Kennedys toured Italy in 1981, people there were shrugging their shoulders. Oh yeah, everybody knows he was murdered. Well, nobody else did, but here's my point. He's a revolutionary hero because here he does, he works really hard, finally gets to the pinnacle of absolute power, and then he dies. He drops dead 30 days later. Imagine if we could do that for all these prima donna egomaniacs who think they should be president. Rick Perry, president for 30 days, gone. Rick Santorum can't even get reelected senator in Pennsylvania. Therefore, he should be president because he's another religious zealot that God likes. Well, fine, go up to heaven and hang out with the rest of those people. Gone. John Edwards, gone. All of them, done.